So and I, I threw up 12 times from food poisoning. I think that's what they're looking for. Okay. Well, in, in an abstract way, London might have gotten started mainly because I felt like while the show was popular, we needed to take advantage of it and go someplace and do the show on an exotic location and have a good time. Uh, and we, we knew the show was popular in England, and so it seemed like a natural fit. And because, they speak English there. Yeah, we, yeah which, is, really which is a plus, because we didn't just want to do um, one of those shows where, you know, the Brady Bunch goes to Hawaii. Uh, we wanted to actually Best be... Wife goes to Russia. Yeah, we wanted to be... We wanted to still feel like friends, um, and so we wanted to shoot a lot of it in front of an audience, and it seemed like a really exciting opportunity to shoot an American sitcom in front of a British audience, uh, as opposed to just shooting it like a movie on the streets. And it was, it was different than we've ever done anything before. I didn't say that right. Um, we did it differently than we've ever done a show before. We did three shows in front of an audience. Usually we just do it once and rewrite as we go along. We did it three times, and after each show, we would sort of all converge and figure out what went right and what went wrong and how we could rewrite for the next show, and then we did slightly differently the next time. Mm. It was also interesting because we had shot about a third of it here. Mm. Um, and a little bit of it on the streets in London. Yeah, so, I, I mean, obviously all the scenes in the apartment and the coffee house, and, uh, but then also a few other scenes, too. So it was, we got over there, and, and we'd go, wow, there's something I'm not sure about here. It's like, it doesn't matter. We've already shot it. So <laughs> there wasn't a lot of debate at that point. And then to add to the complications, we also had a shoot and ending of the show, which was to be kept a secret um, as much as it could. And uh, then we had to shoot scenes for the beginning of next season because... Those scenes happened in the same sets in London, and we couldn't go back there, so we had to shoot those scenes also. So the other different thing is shooting until 4 and 5 in the morning, <laughs> several nights in a row. <laughs> Not as much fun as you'd think. <laughs> how, how did the cast sort of assimilate to the, uh, the UK situation? Um, they were extremely popular there. <laughs> so there was Not that they're not popular here. They're very popular but, but here. But in, in a much more um, in-your-face kind of way. It was, it was pretty amazing that people waiting outside their hotel rooms for... I, I, I don't know that it happens when, when they travel here. People recognized us. Uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was very exciting. It, it was just a really gratifying experience. Pretty much everything we, we'd hoped to get out of it, um, we got. It was also extremely hard work. We didn't really get to play in London, um, as we'd all hoped. We, we worked very hard there. Right. The, the free vacation aspect of it <laughs> didn't come through. <laughs> but the crowd was terrific, though, in terms of when we shot stuff on the streets, because I think one thing that made some of the scenes we shot there on location more successful than what we do here is there's kind of an attitude in California where you've been there, done that, and seen it. And uh, I think on any location we went on, we had at least like 200 people surrounding us. And sort of uh, giving an extra air of excitement to the yeah, whole thing. And it was thing. a little bit like doing it in front of an audience. I was actually going to say to you, um, what was the difference between the California audience and the English audience, if indeed you actually shot it? There actually uh, was very little difference between the audiences. That We were really afraid going over that either uh, they'd be far more sedate, they wouldn't laugh, they'd be... They were great. They were great. Yeah. great. Big laughers they got all... They for hours. They got all the jokes, they laughed at the jokes. Um, it was pretty much everything you want. After the first scene, when we got the laughs we wanted, it was like, okay, we're all right. You know, we didn't have a single bad audience in London. We've had several of them here. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing about the, uh, the London audience that was incredible was... Um, because of, you know, just being there to do this one show, we were able to get more stage space for seating people and more people could see the show at once. But as opposed to 300 people on the Friends stage, we had 500 people in London. So the response was sort of like when that first laugh came, it was, wow, that's loud. And you realize it's 200 more people laughing. Also, there was a, a greater sense of event there than we have week in and week out here, which I think it energized everybody, the actors, uh, the writers. It's very exciting. We missed Lisa. Yeah. We missed Lisa not being there. That was probably the only drawback I can think of. Yeah, it's very weird with only five friends. It's like, that, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Well, Friends has become a major franchise on video in the UK. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been phenomenal, just phenomenal. 
the, the, uh, the videotapes are being right up on the charts <coughs> week after week, number one, number two, number three position. Um, how do you react to that? I mean, cool. Did you ever think it would have a, uh, a life on video? Oh my God! When, you have to realize when we started doing the show, all we wanted to do was make twelve episodes and not get canceled. We um, just stay on the air. So, like any of the millions of things that have happened out of the show, uh, that it's that it's a success on video is amazing and thrilling and unexpected and incredibly satisfying. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. It's very gratifying. Yeah. It's. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about the origins of the show? I think it's interesting historically to be able to use this uh, material to talk about the origins of the show, the gem of the idea. Where did the idea come from, and uh, how did it gel? Did you ever foresee the kind of success that it is today? The answer to the last part is no. Yeah, we, we, we never imagined that it would, it would, the show would lead to anything like this. We had uh, come off doing a show where it was a single lead. He was in his 30s, divorced. Um, and the, the, the problem it was a great show, but every week you were following this one guy in his adventures. And after four or five years of that, you really get tired of going, well, what else could Martin do? And so one of the first things we decided to do was, let's do a show with six people, each of them equally important. Any one of them can carry the storyline. So there's an, uh, hopefully, uh, unlimited number of stories that, that would come out of that. In addition to that, we wanted to make them younger than he was so that they hadn't made all their choices yet, that, that their lives were still in front of them. Um, and it, really, it's just, it's rooted in all, all three of us um, spent a fair bit of our 20s living in New York, and, uh, and our, the friends we had around us were very, very important. Um, and so they that were was... our family. Yeah, that was the germ, uh, th that's the center of the show, um, is w when you're single and you're in your 20s, your friends are your family. And that, once we sort of had that I idea, it guided everything else. A little. Well, clearly I'm Monica. Um, uh, I don't know. A little. I, At times. I, I sometimes see a little bit of Ross uh, in me and uh, sometimes, sometimes a little bit of Chandler. Chandler. I, I definitely see a lot of Monica's neuroses in me. And Every once in a while, ideas. I'm ugly naked guy. That's <laughs> 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 thing I have to deal with. <laughs> but I, I think what's, what's fun about the show is that hopefully a lot, it's not just the people who created it, it's the people who are watching can see I'm a little bit of Joey or I'm a little, that, there's, that there, uh, there are enough relatable points. That, that people can connect. Things that we may have seen in these characters when we first wrote them change a lot once you cast it, and they bring their own lives and their own personalities to it. And, and I think because each character is so distinct that it also led to the, the multiple storylines within every given show because you want to see each character get its due in each show. So when you have three storylines going, it, it also, I think, visually created a pace for us that was exciting in television, that you were never really in one story too long, always back and forth, back and forth. At what point are the friends going to settle down and get married? What kind of their lives are going to go? Ross, yeah. Ross tried. <laughs> Ross tried to get married. Uh, it just it didn't stick. Um, you know, they'll, they'll settle down when the show is over. Uh, um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not funny or that dramatic to have them settle down. Um, but certainly, uh, Phoebe's had a baby. Ross has been married more than once. Ross has Phoebe a kid. She had several babies. She had a lot of babies. None uh, of them are hers, but, you know. <laughs> um, uh, you know, Chandler and Monica are a couple now. Um, so it's not as though every, everyone's life is static, and it's not as though every week it's a new date. Um, what's really satisfying about the show for us is that each of the characters gets arcs. They get they get relationships that last several episodes um, that we can really invest in. Can you tell us about the actors, the selection process, 
this, how did the six actors become the friends? I mean, uh, did they have specific you know, characteristics? Part of, part of what I think happened in the casting process is uh, the stars were aligned right, and, and, and you know, God sort of smiled on us. And, and these are the people who got cast. Yeah, we because Marta and I had been in uh, casting sessions for about two and a half months and probably had seen, you know, 300 to 500 actors for these parts. And I think basically it all came together about two weeks before we finally yeah. set the cast when... Things could have been very different, thank God they weren't. Yeah. David Schwimmer was happy in theater. He really didn't want to go back into television. Um, we made an offer for someone to play the part of Chandler. Thank God he said no. Jennifer Aniston was already committed to a series, and could, although she could do the pilot, couldn't necessarily do the show. We offered the role of Rachel to Courtney Cox. She said no, she wanted to play Monica. I mean, Yeah, there's a lot of that. And, and it's just, it's, it's luck or fate. Um, or, or something larger, but uh, things worked out. Um, can you tell us from each of your own perspective some of perhaps the memorable moments that are over the years, I mean the five seasons, I mean uh, there's got to be some incidents that are either, you know, you haven't slept at night or, or some of the moments that have kind of, I don't know, added to the adrenaline of doing the show. I think probably my favorite night out of five seasons, get a scene in here. <laughs> And Joey comes, Matt LeBlanc comes running in and trips over a piece of the rug and falls so hard behind this couch that you can see the soles of his feet <laughs> behind the couch. And there is nothing that makes me laugh more than when people fall down in real life. That was my favorite part of that night was seeing Marta <laughs> literally on the floor <laughs> laughing so hard she backed down almost. At, uh... he, he did it on the second take and he came in again with as much enthusiasm but right at that spot that he tripped, he just took a glance to make sure he wasn't going to trip again. I got hysterical once again. The third time he did, he came in, he sat down, put his jacket on the back of the chair, and as he went to sit, the chair fell over. And then in the fourth take, perfect, he comes in, he sits down, he starts the scene. Matthew Perry, for no apparent reason, comes running in and falls down. <laughs> it was one of my favorite nights. I don't think I ever laughed so hard. Go ahead. No. <laughs> oh. Favorite night? <clears throat> Favorite night? Um, there was one night you got to go home early. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, no, I, I mean, memorable nights, I, I, I hate to pick on Matt because there was, <laughs> there was and it, wasn't, it actually wasn't funny, but it was the, the, the night we were shooting. We said, you know what, this is, it's, it, because we have so many sets and so many scenes and it always, the, the, it takes a long time to shoot a show. Let's do one. We're just in one room, continuous action. Nobody changes clothes. We don't cut until the end of the scene, until the end of the act. And so, in the great, and it, the whole show, we, we will be out by 8:30. Um, and it was Matt and Matthew, Joey and Chandler, are fighting over a chair. Who gets to sit in the chair? And at one point, Joey comes running in, and he hit the chair wrong and completely dislocated his shoulder. Um, was in unbelievable pain. We Turn stopped the show. The scariest shade of green I've ever seen on a human being. Uh, and and sh stopped the show and, and shot the rest of it six weeks later. So uh, shoulder heel. came out of the sling and all of that. So uh, and it's amazing when you look at the show because it's seamless and it looks like the show that should have gone. Been we should have been home by eight thirty, but uh, but it was certainly. We were home six weeks later. Yeah, among among the more disturbing evenings we've had. Favorite Matt LeBlanc story. It doesn't have to be a Matt LeBlanc story. Uh, I was going to go to Matthew Perry to just have equal time, but uh, when we were doing uh, the football show, um, the thing that was fun about that was um, they really got into the whole football aspect of it, and it almost became a, you know, like a little bit competitive, even though you know, we knew how the plays were supposed to turn out. They just really put their bodies into it, and there was a, a scene where Matthew's supposed to catch a pass, saying, I got it, I got it, and he runs into a wall. Well. Um, you know, you're supposed to do it like an actor, not really for real, and he really hit that wall so hard. That I remember there was just a hush in the audience, and he was fine, but was very loud. Whole wall moved. I think some of the things that, that I look back on and, uh, are the moments when we flat out miss, uh, when we think we've got a great moment, and um, there was one moment where Rachel is with her mother, and her mother has decided she's going to get divorced because Rachel had left her fiance Barry at the altar to pursue an independent life. 
uh, and be happy. And so her mother says, I'm going to do the same thing you are. And um, Rachel tells the story of Barry and how she almost married Barry. And her mother, meaning to say, well, I didn't do what you did. I, she said, well, honey, I married Barry. Meaning she married her husband, who was like Barry. The whole audience went insane. They thought the story was her mother married her ex fiance, and then everything we did after that was much less interesting. No, 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 it wasn't that at all. Um, and then there were, on the other hand, there were two moments that really strike me when you feel like you're doing theater. Um, when television's like theater, there were, it was the end of the poker game and the end of the prom video episodes where the whole audience is absolutely still and hushed and so there with you. And Ross and Rachel's first kiss when, yes. when she walked, when she yes. turned around and saw him standing at the door. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the end of the first season, too. Was yeah. the waiting yeah. for them to get off the plane, waiting for Ross and uh, Julie Those to get fun. off the plane. Yeah, yeah, I think for us sometimes it's, it's the dramatic moments as much as the comedic moments that really mean something, that where we've managed to create a, tr a, a real compelling moment that people are drawn in. I mean, much of the stuff surrounding uh, Phoebe's pregnancy and then having the babies, just, just so compelling. And Lisa did such a brilliant job uh, of, of making it what started as a kind of silly Phoebe notion. She's going to be the surrogate parent to her half-brother's triplets. And yet, as it, as it evolved, you cared so much.